Hey there guys, so I recently got sent the Melee, or Melee, I'm not really sure how you pronounce the name of the company, but this is their Overclock X5 mini PC. So this system is rocking the i5-12450H, and the version that I have does have 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. I believe currently on Amazon you can get it with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD for 350 or you can get the 32 gigabytes and one terabyte version for $420. Taking it out of the box though, we can see that the unit itself is extremely slim and they even advertise that with this sticker on the unit itself, but it is extremely slim, very sharp angles on it as well though. It is an all plastic design except for the base, which is metal and that gives it a nice weight and there's some heft to this unit. But if we take a look at the IO, you can see we have a very nice selection going on here. We, of course, do get two HDMI. We get the Ethernet adapters, though there are two. Interestingly enough, they are far apart from each other on the unit. But we also do have dual USB-C ports. If we take a look at the front, it is completely flush except for the power button. I prefer this setup, honestly, for a living room PC because of the fact that because there is no front USB, it has a far clearer cleaner look. If we take a look at the side here, we can see three full-size USB 3 ports and of course a secondary headphone jack. But now let's open up the system and see what's going on inside. So I'm guessing these are the clips that are holding it in. I'm not I'm not really sure what those are. If they're clips, they, they seem too too far in. Well, we'll we'll see how easy it is to pry this out. Okay, I could definitely feel it already loosening up. It raised up. Okay, well, that's one way to do it. Yeah, the bottom is just a metal plate. But all right, we're in here so we can take a look at what the inside is. And I'm, I'm so surprised that the bottom is literally just a metal plate. That's, I'm guessing, where a decent amount of the weight is. And of course, the thermal pad there. I guess it makes sense. It's using the thermal pad here so that it can dissipate heat onto the entirety of the ba bottom of the chassis. Again, smart design and how they've done this. So what do we have internally? Of course, we have the two dim slots here. What is the speed of the RAM that they put in here? All right, so it's 3200 megahertz. I'm guessing that the system is going to run at that. We do have one M.2 NVMe slot, and there is a second slot, but it says right here it's SATA only, which is <sighs> it's disappointing to see. It's disappointing because SSDs in that size, in that format, just don't really exist anymore. You'll find far more NVMe SSDs out there than you'll find these M.2 SATA. I would honestly rather have seen a lower bandwidth NVMe slot here than the SATA port. But there's not really much you can do about that at this point. And again, for what I'm going to be using this for, this is very overkill. I don't need 32 gigabytes of RAM. In fact, I might just take these out and put in 16 gigabytes because I what I'm going to be using it for, I could get away with 8 gigabytes of RAM. You know? This thing is essentially just going to exist to only play back content. And well, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm definitely going to be testing out how Plex functions on here, but we are going to put it through the entire gamut. I want to see how Windows runs on it. I want to see what the experience is like of using one of these Intel chips because I have not taken a look at any Intel chips like this in what feels like years at this point. Most of the mini PCs that I've gotten that have Intel chips are all just the Alder Lake N processors. I do have some other Intel systems that I just never got around to taking a look at. So who knows? Maybe at one point I'll, I'll take a look at all of them just to see the state of Intel mini PCs right now in the budget market. But I do also have a Lunar Lake laptop that I'm taking a look at. So stay tuned for that. But internally here, there doesn't really seem to be any more that we can go in without just starting to take the whole board out. So we could just seal this thing back up. But okay, I was right. Those things are the clips. Interesting. Yeah, they, they kind of just hold all that stuff into place. So we could seal this thing up. We get it plugged in and we'll see what it's like. So far, I'm really liking the build quality of this thing and not just the build quality but i really appreciate the io layout because again it really just feels like they understand how people use these things almost always you try to minimize the amount of front usb usage that you do unless you're going to be using like a wi-fi adapter or if it's going to be for a wireless keyboard you know those little dongles that don't take up a lot of space usually people are fine with using using those in front usbs but anything else you kind of want it to be on the back or on the side 
side. And the fact that we have the two USB-Cs on the back also makes it far easier to use with a dock or with a dongle. So again, it's they just really thought about how people use these things and a lot of it really shows in the design. I'm just hoping this thing isn't going to be grossly loud. Even if it is, it still functions for what I need it to do, but that's gonna suck. So let's get this thing plugged in. So the first game we're gonna be taking a look at is Combat Master. This is mostly a mobile game that was ported over to PC. And while I really enjoy playing it, and it's one of those games that runs really well on most hardware. So I like to just play it so that any system out there has something that plays really well on it. And as you can see, even though the iGPU of the i5 12450H is not exactly the most powerful, it still does a pretty rock solid job in this title. The frame time chart, of course, shows some great results. And with our FPS average at 104.5 and 1% lows of 46.3, we're getting an absolutely great result here. And you can see that by looking at the overall stutter in the game where 99.2% of the frames were smooth and we just barely stuttered at all. But while it wasn't a perfect experience, it is pretty much as close to that as you can expect to get on a chip like this. Of course, I had to take a look at Counter-Strike 2 since it is the most popular game on Steam. And this is, of course, with the built-in benchmark map. So this is a nightmare scenario. If you're just playing the game multiplayer, you're going to perform even better than this. But even in this nightmare scenario, we get an FPS average of 46.3 with 1% lows of 26.5 and even 0.1% lows of 24.9. It's not ideal for a title like this. So depending on what you're trying to do here, you might not be getting enough FPS and you might have to resort to using FSR. But still, even like this, the overall stutter of the game is just non-existent with a 99.8% of the frames coming in smoothly. This is honestly a better result than what I was expecting to see out of this chip. And of course, I also took a look at Rainbow Six Siege, kind of just expecting this one to really be a disaster. We are running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we did use FSR at the quality preset. And well, here we got an FPS average of 42.4 with 1% lows of 33.9 and 0.1% lows of 32.8. And with pretty much no stutters at all this was a rock solid perfect experience yes it's not a high fps one but it is a consistent one which means it's a playable one these are honestly impressive results to me only because this is an intel chip and it's not like they're modern integrated graphics it's their older integrated graphics and not even the highest end version of that so this is doing better than i ever would have expected it to next we're going to be taking a look at cinebench r20 and here the i5 12450H ends up scoring a multi-core score of 8,757. Putting it above the Ryzen 5 5600H, the Ryzen 5 5500U, and the Ryzen 5 5560U, but still falling behind the Ryzen 5 5600U and the Ryzen 5 6600H. If we take a look at the single core performance, that's where the 12450H really starts to shine, where it has a single core score of 1640, this time putting it ahead of the Ryzen 9 6950H and putting it just below the Ryzen 5 8645HS. So a pretty great showing overall when it comes to single core performance, but it does end up coming behind the Ryzen 5 7640HS that is in the Minis Forum UM760. So I've spent the last few days with the X5 here. And well, you saw from those performance numbers there that it's not exactly the greatest performing mini PC. And at the price point that it's at, I'm really struggling to find a, any way to recommend it or a use case where it's really great. I mean, I think it's a great unit if you need a Plex or Jellyfin server. I love the very thin form factor. I love the way that they've laid out the IO. In particular for living rooms, I 
like the mini PCs that end up having the USB on the sides because when you have it coming out of the front, you're going to inevitably end up using it. And it will not take long till you plug in something in the front that is now just permanent and it ends up looking pretty hideous. The IO in general is just spectacular. I mean, you do get the three USB A's on the side, you get a micro SD card, you get a headphone out, you of course get the dual Ethernet and dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet at that dual hdmi dual usb c and even a secondary headphone jack this thing was designed with the idea of a person realistically using it. the thing that holds it back is just the fact that that i5 12450h isn't exactly the greatest performer at its price point but it is a price category where unless you really need the igpu to be a strong performer there are a lot of options here and you can't necessarily go wrong you know if you pick up this system with this i5 at no point are you really going to say wow this thing is just not powerful enough chances are if you run into a scenario that that is the case you either needed a more powerful igpu or you were better off getting a far more powerful cpu anyway as it stands though at 350 dollars this is a tough recommend because on paper, I like every aspect of it. I love the design of it. I think that the IO layout is very smart. I love the construction because even though it's a plastic housing, the base being a metal plate down here really gives it a very solid feel. Doesn't feel like it'll slide around on your desk at all. But that I-5 is really the big elephant in the room because if you have a task where that's not a problem at all and you just overall like the design in the IO, it's a great choice. But at $350, you have systems with Ryzen 7s, Ryzen 5s, and Ryzen 9s that you could choose from. And all of these are from different generations. But as you saw with the Cinebench scores, this thing effectively performs at the level of a 5000 series Ryzen 5. So something like the Ryzen 5 7640HS is just going to destroy it. And especially because it's $350 if you want the version with 16 gigabytes of ram and a 512 gigabyte ssd if you want a configuration similar to mine which is 32 gigabytes of ram and a one terabyte ssd that comes out at over 400 dollars pretty much putting it in direct competition with systems with the ryzen 7 7840hs a chip that absolutely demolishes this thing so at that price i can't really sit here and recommend this unless you really need need this as a Plex server or a Jellyfin server, or you in general have a task that needs Intel, but you're not willing to shell out more money for something with the i5-12900H or better. It sucks because I like this product. I really like this mini PC. I think it's great, but at the price point that it's at, there are better options. That being said, this is not the last time you're going to be seeing this mini PC. We are going to use it for another task. This thing is a great home server. So that's exactly what I'm going to use it for. So we're going to do a video of using this as a home server. So you can see one of the use cases where it is pretty great at. But as I said, unless you have a very specific task for it, you're likely better off looking at alternatives. So I'll link this down below as well as some alternatives. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.